The first coronavirus-related lawsuit against a cruise line has been filed by a Florida couple who allege not enough was done to limit their exposure to the virus. Does the couple have a case? For assessment, we're joined by criminal defense attorney and legal analyst Trent Copeland. Do, do the Florida residents have a case against the cruise line? Look, um, Larry, I, I'm, I don't mean to be harsh. Um, and um, my sympathies go out to anyone who's stuck on a cruise ship at this time, quarantined, not able to see their family, and there for 14 days. But I am just reminded of a line from James Carville, your friend, who, mm -hmm. who said some years ago, you know, you drag a $100 bill through a trailer park, you might just find anything. I feel like if you drag a $100 bill across the deck of a cruise ship these days, you might just find anything, including a lawsuit. I mean, I just can't believe, Larry, that this couple, and again, my heart goes out to them, being stuck on this ship, believes that the cruise line should somehow be held responsible and negligent for, and considered to be negligent, because the cruise line did not know more than the federal government knew. So what is this, an act of God? Yeah. Nobody's, no suit is available, nobody's to blame. Look, it, it is. Look, this is a pandemic of, of, of extraordinary proportions. The cruise ship had no idea when they, when they took those passengers on of the, the magnitude and the depth and the breadth of what this virus was going to do. So the cruise ship just simply did not know. And what this couple wants is for the cruise ship to have been, been liable and responsible for telling them in advance what the CDC didn't know, what the federal government didn't know, what the World Health Organization didn't know. Where? So I'm just not really sure that this lawsuit goes anywhere. With this coronavirus, where do you see lawsuits possible? I mean, I imagine there'll be many trial attorneys who have, where you, where you'll take on maybe, you'll get yeah. clients. Look, where do you see the possibility a suit might occur here? If there's any daylight, the daylight comes from where there is a cruise ship that knows or should know that they have infected passengers, an infected crew, infected crew members, and notwithstanding that knowledge, they A, refuse to tell the passengers who come in aboard, that they B, place those passengers who come aboard in, in jeopardy, in risk, by putting them in the company of those passengers or, or crew members, and they, and they expose them unnecessarily to a risk. But Larry, that's a huge if. The idea that a cruise ship would, would be so negligent, so grossly negligent, seems hard to imagine. I think the federal government has said, and believe me, the State Department just issued just last week an edict that indicated that they're not even encouraging people to continue to take cruises. So if you do this, you do this at your own peril, at your own risk. Uh, what about personal injury lawsuits against nursing homes or hospitals? Same concept, right? Um, if they knowingly place elderly or the people who are in their care in risk, in danger, by exposing them unnecessarily to people who have been exposed to the virus, then that's a problem. I mean, look, we're seeing, just even as we speak, states, the NCAA, other organizations are taking risk and, and going at great peril to themselves financially, simply saying, look, let's not have large crowds in areas, in arenas where people congregate so that we can reduce, we can minimize the risk of this happening. So, look, I think that has to happen. I think nursing homes, look, I don't expect that they'll take the temperature of every person who's walking through those doors. I don't expect that they're going to swab every person with a, with a virus swab, but they should take reasonable steps. And when they don't, I think that may open up liability for some of those places. City of Costa Mesa, California, is suing the government to halt the transfer of quarantine cruise passengers to a state-owned facility there. What do you make of that? I think, like, you know, the FAA controls the airspace, the FAA controls who can fly in the air, the, the Coast Guard controls with cities and local municipalities who can come and cross into their borders. So it's fully within their rights. I think there'll be some litigation as to whether or not they overexpanded their reach. I think there will be some issues relative to whether or not they have the specific authority in the absence of the federal government giving the city of Costa Mesa those guidelines, but I think it's well within their rights. People want to be safe, people want to feel safe, and they don't want to be exposed unnecessarily to the virus on a large scale. All right, another area. President Trump's re-election campaign is suing CNN for defamation. The lawsuit alleges CNN of publishing a libelous opinion piece on its website 
about Russia's effort, infra, efforts to influence the United States election. What do you make of that lawsuit? Um, so, uh, apparently, President Trump believed that this uh, lawsuit, and the basis of this was an opinion piece in the CNN.com. Apparently, he believed that it was so defamatory, it was so damaging to his reputation, his campaign's reputation, that he had to wait nine months to, to file a lawsuit and to ask for a retraction. So forgive me, Larry, if I have some cynicism about whether or not this is real. Look, the two problems of the lawsuit are this. One, he waited such an extensive period of time to file the lawsuit, and it seems to undermine the credibility of his argument that it, that it, that it was damaging, defamatory, that he had to file it. All right, that's number one. Number two, the problem is this is an opinion piece. This is in the op-ed section of the CNN.com articles. And so the idea that you can chill First Amendment free speech, and you can do that by simply filing a lawsuit against the article, against the writer of the article, against CNN, is absolutely outrageous. And look, what I think this is, Larry, it's a campaign ploy. I think it is an opportunity for President Trump and his campaign to try to chill, to try to beat Muzzle. back and muzzle any articles, any writers who would say something against him. What's, what's really more, I don't think he can, he can bully CNN, the New York Times, or the Washington Post, but who he can bully, who his campaign can impact, are the small writers, the writers who write blogs, it's, it's the mom and pop operations. It's the small newspapers. Those people can be bullied, and those people can be chilled in terms of what they write about him. And I think that's what this is all about. Harvey Weinstein, 23 years. Tough sentence, but Larry, let's think about this in the, in the, um, uh, over the course of two decades. Harvey Weinstein had been accused of either sexually assaulting, sexual uh, harassment, sodomy, abuse, rape of over 80 people in those various categories. The idea that this judge gave him 23 years is tantamount to this judge saying, look, you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison. And what she's essentially saying is, you may not have been, and I think she said this on the record, you may, this may have been your first criminal offense, but this isn't your first offense generally. And so the reality is, I think that this is a case that will stand up to appeal. I think that Harvey Weinstein is going to, in law likelihood, spend the rest of his life in prison. And I think given what the magnitude of the charges were, given the breadth and the extent and the number of women who accused him of these sexual improprieties, this is probably a very, very fair and equitable uh, resolution of the case. It looks like a duck and it acts like a duck. It's probably a duck. It's probably a duck. <laughs> Thanks, Trent, as you always. Bet. You bet.